It's been a while since I last talked about Simpho Gear. Well, on YouTube at least. On Discord, I talk about it like every three days, or at least since he tactics some screenshots from it. So I figured, why not take this chance in the 12 days of anime to talk about Simpho Gear? Especially the final episode. Now I know what you're thinking. This came out last year. I saw it last year. So why am I talking about it this year? Well, for one, do you expect videos about Simpho Gear to make sense? And two, because I want to. And three, I rewatched it a lot this year because it was really good, so I figured it fit, and we're going with it because I want to. So you agree in two. This final episode really is a perfect ending, or at least a perfect example of how to close out a series. Simpho Gear is a show with five seasons. It's a journey that the viewer goes on with the characters over years. It's not just like watch it every week for three months and then you're done. No, this is months if not years depending on when you first got into the series. And this episode does so much, not just to wrap up the story, but all the character arcs and messages, and just Simpho Gear itself better than I could ask for. Yeah, we're going to get into this quite a bit, and by that I mean I'm going to put the episode on the other screen, pause it, write down, and basically enjoy this episode, take screenshots, and write a script, see what happens. By the way, spoilers if that isn't obvious. So the episode starts with the Simpho Gears falling back to Earth, likely burning up on re-entry, with Shem Hawk saying, Meteorites fall and burn away. This is a reference back to season 1 subtitle, Meteorite falling, burning, and disappear, then dot dot dot. I don't know if this is the exact same phrase, just translated differently, because the subtitles are translated kind of weird sometimes. But either way, it was cool seeing how the start of the final episode went back to the very beginning of the show with the first line. That just shows the type of episode and world season this is. It's a celebration of everything Simpho Gear that came before, taken to an even more extreme insanity. Because, well, Simpho Gear is, uh, yeah, insane. So, yes, we have the Simpho Gears falling to Earth in their x drives, ready to sh stop Shem Ha just in time with the most epic entrance possible. And I love how the reason they're just in time is because the IT professionals of the world all came together to fight off Shem Ha through hacking or something. It makes no sense whatsoever, but as an IT professional myself, I like it. Wait a second. There might be some symbolism here now that I think about it. Because, more than anything, the power of computers is the power to bring people together. I mean, you, the person watching this. Would you know who I was if it wasn't for the internet? Like, I would just be some stranger in a different state or country or world or whatever. But here, we have this connection. We both love Simpho Gear. And it wouldn't happen if not for the internet. Or we probably wouldn't even know what Simpho Gear is. And Simpho Gear is all about the power connection. So it would only make sense for it to be the IT professionals, those who built and maintain the internet that causes all these connections, to be the one that lets the Simpho Gear stop Shem Ha and save humanity. I think there might be a bit more to it too, but I'll save that for another video. That I am just horribly overthinking this, but as stupid as Simpho Gear is, it is pretty smart. And then back to the fight, we have the Simpho Gears teaming up with Carol to stop Shem Ha. And this ties back into Carol's story, back in Season 3, to bring it forward into Season 5. And then we get a flashback to Hibiki and Miku's relationship, the strains in it, but also the love that Hibiki has for Miku. Again, this tying all these various plot threads together. And then, of course, we have the epic battle of epic. All seven of them bringing their song together. And I love the song. It is humanity's fight song, all about the power of music and the power to convey feelings and bring people together. Plus, not giving up because this is anime. And this battle is so filled with hope and determination. And it's just so powerful. This is the type of feeling I love from anime battles. I also want to take a second to pause on Hibiki's lyric, Believe in justice and let courage bloom in your fists. This is a reference back to Season 3 subtitle, Believe in Justice and Hold a Determination to Fist. Which I'm pretty sure the subtitle is translated wrong. That are saying things about Hibiki Miku's relationship, but we're not going to think about that uh, possibility too much here. Based on Google Translate, it seems like a better translation is to believe in justice and grip it tight. So either way, this is showing how the episode is pulling back from the beginning into the final battle. I could also pause on pretty much every line of this song because the lyrics are so great, but that would take so long, and I don't want the video to go on longer than the episode itself. 
Actually, I kind of do because that would be fun and ridiculous and Sinful Gear is funny and ridiculous, but I don't want to edit that. But the one line that really stood out to me is about lives burning so bright as to melt the most frozen of hearts. I love the imagery here, and it fits the show so well. So many of the characters have had frozen hearts, unlocked by the kindness of the Sinful Gears and their friends. That's what the show is all about, and then the line about the world taking flight on wings spun from music. Again, just wonderful imagery, and it fits too with the Sinful Gears and their ex gears having wings. I didn't just thought about that connection as I'm speaking this, not, not when I wrote it. That's cool, I like it, a nice touch. But yes, just when it looks like they're about to win, Shimha speaks to Hibiki with Mika's voice, causing her to hesitate, stopping her attack and letting Shimha strike back. Then Carol asks Hibiki, where Carol is doing all she can to fend off Shimha's attack, what does Hibiki want? And that is Miku. She's afraid to go after Miku with her cursed fist, though. But Carol rebukes that, talking about the hope that lives in Hibiki's fist. Then, all the world becomes subdued by Shemha's power. He became the only one who can still fight, and then she brings together all the world's hope for one final attack. This feels like the cliché final attack to close out every final battle of an anime. This is the spirit bomb of Symphogear. Though with a twist that makes it Symphogear. But of course, what final strike in an anime could be complete without the opening song playing? Especially a show all about music like Symphogear is. And it was with this battle that I understood the meaning of the opening. It's about living freely. Think back to the opening, how it's showing so many characters who... Could. Think back to the beginning, the opening, how it was about all these characters who want to live freely, but they're too burdened by their past. In here, with the hopes of the world imbued in Hibiki's fist, she's fighting for a world where she, Miku, and everyone else can live freely. And then Hibiki breaks through Shimha's defense with her final attack, a hug. This is Symphogear. Now you may say it's stupid, but it's Symphogear, so that argument is just invalid. And it fits perfectly. Hibiki is not someone who fights to hurt people, but it is because she wants to protect those she loves, and there is no one she loves more than Miku. So to say the one she loves, what would make sense more than an expression of love, wrapping Miku in her hands and holding her tight? That is Symphogear. What a battle. But we're not done yet. You see, there's always the true final battle that ends every anime. That goes beyond what the viewer is expecting, going in new directions to surprise the viewer, and finally closing everything out. Though before that, we get a heartwarming scene between Carol and the Elf Nine, which reveal that Carol burned away herself to protect Elf Nine. And I love how this shows that Carol found what her father was after, and is now using that to save the world that she's come to care about. You know, they didn't need to bring Carol back. In a way, it was just fan service. But it ended up working so well, adding so much to this season. And plus, let's be real, this season is fan service for Symphogear. And I would not have it any other way. Back to the battle, kind of, though. The Symphogears go down to Yggdrasil's core, but they seem overwhelmed by the monster things. Then Mika shows up, in her gear, now to help. She wants to be by Hibiki's side, and now all seven of them must join their songs together to take control of Yggdrasil. I'm not completely sure how all this makes sense, but it leads to their final song, which is more about emotions than logic anyway. And believe me, the song is so packed with emotion. It's about celebrating their journey, seeing images of those they met and lost throughout the show. They t the narration ties this back to Ryoko, how her research is connecting humanity together now. There's so much meaning, so much feeling, and so much story tied together in the song. It is Symphogear's swan song, in more ways than one. And so, they take control of Yggdrasil, they win, and they escape the core. But then Shemha reaches out to grab them again, getting Hibiki and Miku. Shemha asks them why they few Shemha asks them why they refuse to be melted into one. And Miku's answer is that it's because they can't understand each other easily, and that's what leads them to truly love each other. And Shemha rebuttals, Well what about the pain? And Hibiki vows to keep going forward, even when they will hurt each other, because humans are like that. And then Shemha lets them go. 
granting them their future apart from her control or her desire. Closing out her arc and, in a way, humanity's arc. Plus, you of course have Hibiki referencing the, this season's subtitle about forging a future with a light unknown to the gods. Again, a la- nice touch going all throughout the five seasons. Though I don't know if they reference seasons two and four subtitle. If so, I didn't recognize it. And I love Hibiki's reaction too when they got back, just about being overwhelmed by being held in Shemha's huge hands. Like, she was in awe of that and possibly overwhelmed how the future is now given to her from the gods. Kind of, yeah, that would be overwhelming, wouldn't it? And then we get the credits with another song, and this one with all the characters celebrating the battles they fought. This song especially feels like it's a message for the viewer to take from Symphogear, which that's just a great way to end it. So of course, it didn't end because we have an after credits scene, where the character is at the grave of Subasa's father. And I love Miku's narration here, talking about the painful attempts to connect, but the wonderful memories made through them. And then we get Hibiki and Miku together to close out the series. This was a phenomenal episode, all about coming together in a way that only anime can do. I remember last year how I did the podcast with Sea Tactics on Season 5 as it was coming out, and just how much fun we had talking about the show. The two of us, along with my brother, watched most of the episodes together, so it really did bring us together, like Symphony Gear is all about. It was just a lot of fun. So I decided to close out this video about Symphony Gear by asking C to say a few words about Symphony Gear. Though I don't know what he's going to say or what he said, but I'm going to trust him because we have that type of connection that I know this will not end in disaster. No, for real, I don't know what he's saying. I have the audio file here. It's 47 seconds. I'm going to find out as I edit this video. So with that, thank you, and C, take it from here. So I was asked to uh, appear on the Great Ones Rising Sun Reviews channel to talk about some Symphon Gear, and I must say, I'm just going to give like a straight review of the whole series, what it means to me. Symphon Gear, 10 out of 10. Four reasons, guys, four reasons. One, music. Two, explosions. Three, massive memories. That's right, boobs. Four, Chris Chan is my religion. Keep it, keep it, keep it clean, y'all. Keep it, keep safe out there. I want to see any of you doing drugs. And if you do, I will be sad. Thanks everybody for, everybody subscribing. Ring the bell rising right now. Get them to 6,000 subscribers. If you don't, I'm going to cry. Love y'all. Bye.